Candida, part of the body's inner ecosystem. Candida albicans is a source of discomfort, pain and embarrassment to many. To some it even proven injurious to long-term health. Many sufferers may not even know what Candida albicans is they may just think they suffer from recurring, thrush, or, yeast infection. When it turns up again, unwanted, they may apply their topical cream and wait for the symptoms to subside again. This video explains what Candida albicans is and why it affects some people more than others. It helps identify causes and lists natural ways of preventing outbreaks, as well as treating symptoms. Understanding how and why Candida albicans affects us as it does will give increased understanding to many people. The greatest benefit will be the realization that outbreaks can be largely prevented by personal actions such as dietary changes. Instead of feeling like powerless victims, they will realize how much can control they have, if they choose to exercise it. Before we talk about a candida overgrowth and the symptoms and health problems that can occur, it must be stressed that the candida fungus is a crucial part of the body's inner ecosystem. Candida albicans is a fungus that exists as a yeast in a person's gut flora. These yeast organisms are a normal component that naturally coexist in a relatively benign state with the other elements that make up the digestive system. The fungus also exists in other areas of the body, including the skin. Having healthy levels of candida is necessary for efficient nutrient absorption. It is also important for protecting the intestinal tract against infections. As with most of our bodily systems, an imbalance is what causes problems. The gut functions with its own neurological and immune systems, and maintaining a healthy and balanced system is critical to proper digestive function. Modern lifestyle can disrupt the balance. Unfortunately, a modern lifestyle encompasses many factors that are far from natural. Diet is the most impacting of these, but not the only one. Various dietary and environmental inputs can cause a disruption to the natural balance that makes up a healthy gut flora. Yeasts, by their nature, are opportunistic. When the ideal conditions exist for them, they can explode in numbers. The conditions that yeasts find ideal in our digestive system are those that are not ideal for our health. Yeast is normally helpful in a healthy gut, this works to our advantage, which is why they are part of our gut flora in the first place. For example, in a healthy, balanced digestive system, if there is a sudden spike in sugar in the gut, the yeasts, which live on sugar, reproduce rapidly, expending and neutralizing the excess sugars. As their food supply diminishes, largely due to their consumption of it, the yeasts die off to a sustainable level. Balance is restored and all is good in the gut again. Problems arise, and remain, when the triggers that cause the yeast explosion continue to be present. So then, rather than being a solution to a temporary problem, the continued yeast overgrowth becomes a problem in itself. Candida albicans is one of the candida species that can cause candidiasis if an overgrowth occurs. An overgrowth of candida can cause many health problems, due to the imbalance of the microorganisms that result from it. Candidiasis. The term, candidiasis, is often referred to as a condition that is specific and diagnosable, such as thrush or yeast infection. This is what most people have heard of before, although they may not have understood the reasons why it came about in the first place. Once the signs and symptoms of candidiasis are evident, it is often termed a yeast infection. Technically this is not correct as the organism was already present in the body, the problem is actually a yeast overgrowth. Understanding this may help sufferers realize the aim is not to eradicate the yeast, but have it return to normal levels in their body. However, the term, yeast infection, is commonly used to describe an outbreak of candida, and will be discussed in this video. Is candida contagious? This is a big question with no simple answer. If the fungus already exists in all of us, then person-to-person -person transfer should be irrelevant, surely. As stated before, yeasts are opportunistic. Look at bread or beer yeast. It sits in a dry state for long periods, inactive, until a little sugar, water and warmth are added, and they explode into an eating and breeding frenzy. Recipient conditions the biggest factor. Candida albicans operates the same way. If the environmental and feeding conditions are conducive to yeast growth, populations will increase rapidly, potentially to levels that cause candidiasis. When these actively expand, virulent yeast colonies are brought into contact with another ideal environment, they will attempt to colonize that person also. If the recipient has, at that point in time, a suboptimal immune system, they are vulnerable to catching a yeast infection. 
the immune system may simply be temporarily challenged by overcoming a simple infection such as cold or flu, dietary indulgence, stress or a number of other factors. The recipient may also be providing a wet, warm, tropical, environment on their body where candida can thrive, as can occur between toes, under armpits, or genital regions. Overweight people are more prone. This is one of the reasons why overweight individuals are more prone to candida infections. Another is that the same dietary indulgences that lead to being overweight are also those that candida thrive on. This means that a person with a strong immune system, of ideal weight, eating only healthy foods, who can stay cool and dry, will have a nil to very low chance of catching a candida infection, even from someone with a very advanced infection. All of the people, some of the time. For most people, being in that state some of the time, let alone all of the time is improbable. Many of our activities create exactly the conditions required for candida to thrive. One of the more common areas of concern for candida infection is that which affects the genital area. Sex provides an ideal moisture and temperature climate, if the person has a high sugar diet they are setting up optimum growing conditions for candida. What causes a candida overgrowth? Temporary disease and ill health are a part of being a living organism. Isolated incidences of candida overgrowth may be little more than a nuisance, however if they become persistent, chronic, or even simply recurring, they can become a real problem. If this happens, rather than simply treating the symptoms, in the best interests of your health and happiness to look for the causes or triggers of the condition. There are different reasons why an imbalance occurs in a digestive tract. These can evolve differently, by simply adding an input such as sugar that invites yeast growth, or in a more complex way by impacting another gut flora component, which subsequently affects the gut balance. Either way, balance is affected and the yeast population can be maintained at higher levels than are good for our health. Here are just a few of the known factors that can cause an overgrowth of Candida albicans. Antibiotics. Unfortunately, having to take antibiotics can cause an overgrowth of yeast. Overusing or long-term use of antibiotics will not only kill the disease-causing bacteria, it can also kill the healthy bacteria in the digestive system. The healthy bacteria in the colon, for example Lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacteria, dies along with the bad bacteria when this happens, your body will have difficulty keeping candida under control. Birth control pills. Many women have reported that the taking of birth control pills can trigger a vaginal yeast infection. Oral corticosteroids corticosteroid inhalants such as those being used by asthmatic patients increases their chances of developing oral thrush. One way to help prevent this from happening is to swish the mouth out with water after using the inhalant. Cancer treatments. Research shows that one third of individuals who have cancer have also been found to have invasive candidiasis. This is due to the chemotherapy treatment which is designed to kill cancerous tumors and cells. However, it also kills the healthy bacteria which keeps everything under control, which can lead to an overgrowth of candida albicans. Diabetes. Diabetic individuals are also more prone to developing a candida overgrowth. This is because diabetics have high levels of sugar in their mucous membranes, making it a perfect environment and breeding place for a yeast explosion. Weakened immune system. A candida overgrowth doesn't single out any age, race or gender. Whether it be a child or adult, male or female, a weakened immune system means you can be at risk of developing a yeast infection or candida overgrowth. We thank you so much for watching. If you've liked the video give it a thumb up, don't forget to share with your friends. For more nutrition, health and beauty tips, please subscribe to our channel.